Well, <clears throat> I want to welcome. Thanks. I want to welcome everyone here uh, this afternoon for this press conference. My name is Kevin Sabet. I'm a former senior policy advisor in the Obama administration and the current president of SAM, Smart Approaches to Marijuana, which was founded by former Congressman Patrick Kennedy uh, to slow this train down of drug legalization in the state of New York, and specifically the commercialization of marijuana, which is going to create a new industry similar to big tobacco. I am honored to be joined by multiple representatives of different organizations, uh, including the Harris Project, and Stephanie's going to speak as a mother uh, who unfortunately lost a child. Um, I'm going to be, uh, that's going to, she's going to be followed by a Westchester resident who moved from Colorado and voted for legalization and regrets that and is going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, we also are represented by the New York State PTA here today, uh, the Police Conference of New York, the New York Society of Addiction Medicine, the Leaf Council on Alcoholism and Drug Addiction, which is a prevention organization, um, Drug Crisis in Our Backyard, a representative to talk about the scourge of the opioid epidemic and how marijuana legalization is linked to that. We have the Deputy Director of the Yonkers Community Action Program, and we also have a former bud tender, a person that would sell legal marijuana in the state of Massachusetts to talk about the real experience there. But just first, a few, um, a few uh, remarks here. You know, we are often caught in a false dichotomy that you either have to criminalize people and lock them up for minor pot possession, or you have to legalize marijuana. And we should reject that false dichotomy. We can make our current drug laws better without creating the Philip Morris of marijuana. And let's be very clear, the investors in marijuana who will rapidly take over this industry will not look like the communities affected negatively by the war on drugs. Let's be very clear, they will look like the fat cats of big tobacco that laughed and still laugh all the way to the bank after lying to the American people for a century about the harms of tobacco. They will also be replaced by the big pharma executives who today, the, found, the former CEO of Purdue Pharma, who actually came up with the sales plan for OxyContin and made billions off of the backs of addiction, that person, John Stewart, is now a marijuana company executive. So the issue is, folks, legalization is about big money for a small handful of people. It is not about social justice. We can fix social justice, and we should, in our criminal justice system. We absolutely should not be locking people up. But to say that the answer to that is to legalize and commercialize a substance that is often 20 to 30 times stronger than the marijuana of Woodstock is a fallacy. There are more pot shops in Colorado than McDonald's and Starbucks combined. There are more uh, folks from the tobacco and pharma industries involved in this industry of marijuana than we've ever had. And the marijuana of today is now waxes, edibles, cookies, candy bars, lollipops. It's not the old joint that was passed around 40 years ago. So we're saying, let's slow this train down. Marijuana legalization is not inevitable in New York. If passed in New York, which we don't think it will be passed, but if it is, it'll be the first state in the country to pass this by legislature. There's a reason why other legislatures have said no to this, why eight states rejected marijuana legalization last year, which is a story that is not told. So let's not throw people in prison for pot. We'll agree with many people on that issue, but let's also not consign our kids to a lifetime of addiction with stuff that is 30 times stronger than it used to be, things that are now linked with mental illness, psychosis, schizophrenia, with these edibles that are being promoted, with public marijuana use, which as a New York uh, City resident I can say is now sadly smelled on almost every street uh, much more than it used to be. So. We want to slow the train down. We think we should. And I, I would like Stephanie from the Harris Project, who's courageously come to talk very briefly about her story. Um, that's going to follow by Hannah and then the other folks that I mentioned. So thank you all for coming. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you, Sam, for inviting to, me to join you today. My name is Stephanie Marcasano, and I'm a Westchester County, New York resident. My 19-year-old son, Harris, died by accidental overdose in 2013. Like millions in this country, Harris had co-occurring disorders, which is the relationship between mental health and substance misuse and addiction. For Harris, it was an anxiety disorder and ADHD, and he turned to substances, beginning with marijuana, to self-medicate. Two weeks before his death, 
Harris told me that had he never started smoking marijuana, none of this would ever have happened. When I asked him what he meant, he said sometimes marijuana mellowed him out, but other times it made his anxiety much worse. The challenge was that regardless of the feeling, and most of the time it was negative, he couldn't stop. For Harris, this ultimately led to the use of prescription medication. I launched the Harris Project at his funeral and have become an advocate for the prevention and treatment of co-occurring disorders to change outcomes for teens, young adults, and their families. The Harris Project developed CODA, Co-Occurring Disorder Awareness, a peer-led prevention program that has been introduced in high schools and colleges across Westchester County and regionally, thanks to collaborators including the Westchester County Department of Community Mental Health and our County Executive's Office. CODA encourages our kids to explore paths to substance misuse and addiction, including things like mental health challenges, trauma, sports injury, wisdom tooth removal, as well as brain changes that come from use. It's true, your brain isn't fully developed until you're 25. To become empowered decision makers, to connect to peers who may be struggling, to know how to link to appropriate resources, and to create communities that care. I also collaborate with providers in Westchester and our six surrounding counties to transform the system of care so the treatment is integrated and meets the comprehensive and co-occurring needs of the individual to provide the best opportunity to sustain recovery. I am here today because Governor Cuomo has placed the legalization of marijuana for recreational use as a revenue item in the state budget. I am concerned that this simple act going from zero to 60 without looking at the complete picture may cause us challenges. I am asking the governor and our legislators to simply slow down. To that end, New Yorkers would benefit from a thorough examination of the states that have legalized marijuana for recreational use and carefully weigh the true impact. To that end, there needs to be a focus on the impact of marijuana use on those with existing or emerging mental health disorders. To that end, it is necessary to estimate and prepare for any associated costs for potential negative effects of marijuana use, including an even greater need for co-occurring and integrated treatment and systems of care. To that end, we need, we need to explore and plan to create a method of, to determine if someone is an impaired driver. To that end, we must establish appropriate regulations for advertising and warning labels should, should it's so challenging <laughs> and warning labels should happen prior to any sale to that end decriminalization and the use of marijuana for legitimate medical conditions must be viewed separately and not conflated with legalization for recreational use and finally one of the most important things, and perhaps the thing that's nearest and dearest to my heart, there must be proactive and preemptive rollout of prevention programming geared towards youth that is relatable, relevant, and evidence-based, and is sufficiently funded. As a mom, my request is simple, slow down. It is time that we put ourselves in a position of power and lay the groundwork to ensure that we do not end up with yet another crisis. There is just too much at stake. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Kyle Belikopitsky, Executive Director of the New York State Parent Teacher Association, and we are firmly and strongly opposed to the legalization of recreational marijuana in New York. On behalf of our 2.6 million school children, I urge anyone watching this, our legislature and governor, to please say no to this proposal. This is a child welfare and health issue. Our children will be harmed by the legalization of marijuana. And we understand that there is a disproportionate arrest and jailing of certain ethnic and racial minority groups. This will not solve that issue. We also realize that there are concerns with the current medical marijuana program. Again, this will not solve that issue. One in five of our children is currently using vaping or tobacco in high school.
One in five of our high school children in currently in the past month has been vaping or using tobacco. This will affect them. So please, for our children's sake, for the sake of our future and for the sake of our children's health, say no to this proposal. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hannah Kenny, and I am a resident of Westchester County, New York. Prior to moving to New York, my family and I lived in Colorado, and I was excited, actually, to vote in 2012 to legalize recreational marijuana in Colorado. I am not a person who consumes marijuana myself, but I do have friends who do, and my sense of it was, generally speaking, people are already doing this. Why aren't we just going to regulate and tax it? It seemed like a pretty simple step to just go from one side of the street to the other. And so as a resident citizen of Colorado, I voted for it. That was generally speaking the impression most of my friends had about this piece of legislation was it was just going to kind of codify something that already existed. What we found was almost immediately after it was legalized, it was as though a curtain had been ripped off of the situation. And you could see the people and the machinations behind. The impression that I had was that it was a simple matter of taxation and regulation, just making it to a simple shift. What happened was overnight, there were billboards up all over the place. There were uh, signs on the sides of buildings. The Denver Post was running constant articles about cannabis, this and that, and marijuana use. And the marketing push that was directed at children was like that. And that's why I decided to come today, because as now a New York resident and a parent, and I will say also a Democrat, there are Democrats who are opposed to this. I'm here to let you know that this is not something that I think that we are prepared for as a society. And I'm very concerned about the impact that it will have on our children. Make no doubt about it, this is not some people who casually want to use marijuana legally. This is big business coming to your home and neighborhood. That's it. Thank you. We're going to uh, next hear from uh, Assemblywoman Fahey. Sorry, I uh, didn't know if I was speaking or not. Uh, yes, Assemblywoman Fahey, this is my district in Albany. Uh, this morning we had a terrific panel uh, with a whole host of experts, uh, pro and con. Uh, my issues continue to be the same. Uh, my, my very, very serious concerns is that we need more time here. Uh, two principal issues for me remain uh, with everything I'm reading, and there's a lot of issues that need to be addressed. Um, I'll give that a second. But the two issues remain the youth usage, and that is the increase in uh, the intensity of youth usage that we are seeing in other states. Well, some of the preliminary data is showing that it is a, uh, it, it's about similar usage overall. There is an intensity on usage, and we know that that leads to all sorts of other related problems, uh, health problems and developmental problems for youth because the brain is not fully developed until age 25. Second major issue for me is impaired driving. The fact that we could talk about legalizing this while not having the ability to fully to fully address impaired driving. So it's a busy day here. So while I um, I do think this needs more work, I very much want to see this come out of the budget. I want to make sure that this is not about big money, big commercialization, big corporatization on what we are seeing on troubling trends. Let's focus on decriminalization and expunging records. Let's correct the historic wrongs, and we know that many other states have done that as an afterthought, and they're still not done. That's where our priority should be, the criminal justice angle of this, decriminalizing, expunging records, and focusing on, again, correcting those historic wrongs while we figure out the science and not let politics get ahead of the science, or what some think is a revenue raiser, get ahead of the science. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblywoman, uh, for those remarks. Uh, I want to now turn to William Jones, who uh, is an activist from Washington, D.C., uh, to underscore the 
issues we heard about from this Assemblywoman Fahey about needing to separate decriminalization, medical marijuana, and the legalization, which is really the commercialization of marijuana. We have to separate those things. Uh, they're not the same thing, and um, William Jones is going to talk a little bit about that. Good afternoon. I'm here today because I am passionate about social justice and I want to see the historic inequalities and discrimination uh, and injustices that our community face. I want to see those addressed. But what we have today is a commercial industry that is using issues of social justice for their own profit. They're taking the issues of social justice and claiming that legalization and commercialization will fix those issues when the reality is it will not. When I walk out the front door of my house, the closest store that I get to in any direction is an alcohol store. If I go a little bit farther, I might get to a convenience store, but it's so plastered with advertisements for tobacco and for for alcohol and for the lottery that I can't even see inside the windows of that store. Commercialization will continue this pattern of, of targeting disenfranchised communities with their products. We've seen this happen with alcohol. We've seen this happen with tobacco. We've seen this happen with the lottery. To those that say the revenue from, from, uh, from commercialization is going to help our community, when has the revenue from alcohol, which is heavily taxed, or tobacco, or the lottery, when has it actually changed our communities? This is a myth that corporate organizations that want our dollars are pushing that this is for social equality, that this is for social justice, when again the reality is that it will further inequalities that our community already faces. We already have the inequalities in advertisements from alcohol and tobacco, and even at a deeper level, our community it is true that you're three times more likely to be arrested for marijuana use if you are uh, black than if you're white. But legalization does not address that at all. Instead of holding accountable the individuals and departments that perpetuate unequal law enforcement, it gives them a free pass, changes the conversation, talks about a commercialization of a product, and leaves those systems of inequality, those individuals, those departments in place. Uh, any officer that you know, before would have had a discriminatory way in which he would enforce the law is not suddenly going to have a change of heart because we commercialize marijuana. This is a much deeper issue, and if we truly care about social justice, we should remove criminal penalties for, for marijuana use. We should focus on expungements. But the idea that we have to commercialize a predatory industry that will target our communities, where in Colorado, in minority communities, there's one pot shop for every 47 residents just like what we have with alcohol and tobacco. To say that we have to do that to further social issues of social justice is completely a farce. We cannot allow this to continue. We need to address these as, as the issues truly are. Focus on social justice, focus on removing criminal penalties, and not confuse that with commercialization. The last thing that we should consider is that no state that has legalized marijuana saw any corresponding reduction in their prison, in their overall prison population rate. While people, while arrests for marijuana did decline in some states that uh, legalized, the overall prison rate remained the incarceration population remained the same because it didn't deal with the heart of the issue. And this is what we need to focus on if we truly care about social justice. And so I'm here again to say that if we care about social justice, marijuana commercialization is not that. It's a farce in the name of a commercial industry. We need to hold people accountable and not allow this predatory industry to use commercial justice as a guise for their for-profit addiction industry. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carol Christensen. I'm co-founder of Drug Crisis in Our Backyard in Westchester and Putnam Counties. A little louder. A little louder? A little louder? Okay. Okay. Should I start over? <laughs> okay. Okay. My organization, Drug Crisis in Our Backyard, is opposed to the legalization of marijuana. We're opposed to it for many reasons that have already been said. It's as a parent of one of thousands of children who have died of an overdose of heroin, my son also started with marijuana also as a young person. I, we can't believe that the government wants to do something like this to legalize this 
for what purpose to make money? Does this make us as bad as the drug dealers? I don't really know. You know, it's, it's just heartbreaking to have this come up. I thought Governor Cuomo was against this. However, we need everybody to vote to be against legalization of marijuana. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Janera Forte, and I'm the Deputy Director of Yonkers Community Action Program. And our mission is simply to reduce poverty while promoting self-sufficiency. Yonkers is the fourth largest city within the state of New York, and it has areas of high poverty levels in minority populations. Therefore, the thought of legalizing marijuana is extremely concerning. Although many are aware that people of color are arrested at alarmingly higher rate than whites, legalizing marijuana will not solve this disproportionality issue, not in Yonkers or any other urban community. In fact, data states that the states that have legalized marijuana, people of color continue to be arrested at higher rates. Legalizing marijuana will not solve this issue because this issue pertains to social justice. Furthermore, as a drug prevention professional with over 20 years of experience in youth development and as a mom of a 13-year-old girl, I'm also here to speak on behalf of our young people. When Colorado legalized marijuana, it became the number one state for teen marijuana use. This is not the statistic I want for my child or for any of the youth in the state of New York. I had a really real conversation with one of the youth that we work with. And I asked her her opinion about the legalization of marijuana, and she simply say, stated, it's hard enough to get out of Yonkers. Why would we need any more obstacles? The life of a teenager is quite difficult. It requires them to navigate through situations, and it's important that they're able to do so productively and in a sober environment. Therefore, it's our responsibility to send a clear message to our youth that their lives as drug-free individuals matter. Also, the legalization of marijuana weakens the foundation of prevention, treatment, and recovery. And it will adversely affect our youth, our families, and our communities. Therefore, we urge New York to lead the fight against, mar against legalization of marijuana. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Julie Dostel. I'm the Executive Director of the LEAF Council on Alcoholism and Addictions, and my agency is also a member of the statewide organization, the Council on Addiction of New York State. I am a preventionist. As a preventionist, my job is to attempt to stop harm before it ever starts. The job of agencies like mine across the state is to help create an environment where substance-related harm is averted prior to its impact on people. When we are able to avert harm, medical costs are lowered, law, enfor law enforcement costs are lowered, and work productivity is elevated. And adults and youth have the best chance of living life without a debilitating chronic disease. I'm not sure if you're aware, but New York State policies have made the job of preventionists much more difficult, difficult over the last decade. New York has decided to use alcohol as an economic development strategy. They voted to legalize gambling and allowed non-FDA approved cannabis to be used for medical purposes. Our youth watch us, and they interpret legal as okay. They interpret legal as safe. It is very difficult to reduce the risk of harm when addictive products and activities are used and promoted by the state that the youth live in. The pro-cannabis report of the New York State Department of Health states that between 9 and 30 percent of people who use cannabis will become dependent on it, addicted. If we were considering a brand new industry that sold a product that caused 9 percent of those to get cancer, would we support it? If we were considering a new industry that those who exposed to the products would get diabetes or blood, high blood pressure, would we approve of it? If your answer is no, 
then how can we possibly be considering a new industry that will cause between 9 and 30 percent of those using the product to acquire a chronic, relapsing, debilitating, and often fatal disease of addiction? And for those using on a daily basis, that number actually approaches 50 percent. Are those people expendable for the sake of an industry? Preventionists, by their very nature, are optimists, and I happen to believe that New York will choose people over corporations. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ann Hassel, and I worked a year and a half in a licensed Massachusetts marijuana dispensary as a bud tender, so I sold product to, uh, to individuals. I'm here to tell you that marijuana, the commercialized, industrialized marijuana industry is not healthy and it's not safe. In fact, in order to maximize profits, corporations are willing to put people's health in danger. I know for a fact that the marijuana I sold had mold, fungus, hydrogen peroxide, pesticides, and heavy metals. And I want to urge the, and I have reported this to my state and had no outcome whatsoever. So I want to urge the residents of New York to go slow with this, to think about the health of, of your uh, citizens. Health is more important than profits. Thank you. Thank you. Well, th thank you, and I want to thank everybody and, and really um, implore the governor to trust his gut on this, trust what he believed. Uh, at one point, which is correct. Uh, it actually is validated by the National Academy of Sciences that for some people, not everyone, marijuana can lead to much more dangerous drugs. We heard a couple stories today from people who are living that nightmare and are living that statistic. And to look them in the eye now and say that that statistic is no longer valid because of political expediency, and I'm saying this as a former Obama administration political appointee, that is not the right thing to do. Listen to your fellow Democrat governors. Listen to Jerry Brown, who last week said that this is not for money. There is no money. Um, we knew there wasn't going to be any money, was his exact quote, and who said this is about getting stoned. Listen to uh, your possible presidential contender uh, person respected on both sides of the aisle, John Hickenlooper, who said that this was a drop in the bucket. And uh, when Governor Hickenlooper said that, Governor Brown last week saying that this is really just about people getting stoned, it's not about money. Governor, I I'm asking you to listen to your fellow governors. This may look like a short-term political gain, but in the, rea in the reality is folks on the local level do not want a marijuana store in their own community. They do not want to see pot candy, cookies, gummy bears, ice cream, and edibles, and 99% waxes being sold near the libraries. And we need to go a lot slower on this. Let's not create Philip Morris for marijuana, which is exactly what would happen if we legalized marijuana. So we're imploring the legislature to exercise its responsibility, uh, its oversight over the executive, and go slow um, not to pass this in the budget. And I think it's very important to do that. And I think it's very important to understand the medical aspect of this as well. When your own state society of addiction medicine when your own state medical society is saying this is a bad idea for the health of New Yorkers, we should listen to them. And I'm proud that we have Dr. Greg Bunt here to round us up, who's the past president of the New York Society of Addiction Medicine, to talk for a few minutes about the health risks and why this society is against this. Please, Greg. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Kevin. Okay, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm the past president of the New York Society of Addiction Medicine, which is the New York chapter of the American Society of Addiction Medicine. Over 5,000 addiction doctors nationally with uh, expertise and training in addiction medicine. And uh, clearly, uh, we have a position. Now, we've evolved our position, and we are supporting decriminalization. We actually have that in some of our policy statements. Uh, people who have uh, the possession of marijuana for their own personal use should not be arrested and incarcerated. Everybody's against that. But we are opposed to the legalization of 
the commercial promotion and sale of marijuana. And that, that is going to lead to many adverse consequences. Uh, in Colorado, of course, uh, there's a lot of money coming in and uh, there are growing problems with uh, marijuana dependence and addiction. But once it gets to New York and you got the Wall Street big guys and the Madison Avenue big guys promoting this legalized marijuana, you will see now another quantum leap beyond Colorado in accessing marijuana to the public and accessing marijuana that has high potency THC, that's tetrahydrocannabinol. That is the substance that clearly is addictive. There's no question about it. About 10% of mar marijuana users will become addicted to the THC. And, and also, it has adverse effects, particularly uh, for adolescents on their cognition. It's a gateway drug. It's a gateway drug when used in those high concentrations of THC that are being marketed and promoted uh, at younger ages. And so uh, we, we're going to see a gateway effect to other drugs like cocaine uh, and opiates. Uh, and, and so with all of those adverse uh, effects, uh, there's also a particular concern on what we've identified as the vulnerable populations to the adverse effects. The vulnerable populations, after a, a lot of studying and data, uh, in the ASAM policy uh, statement, vulnerable populations include adolescents, and they're going to be profoundly affected, particularly the ones in underserved areas. Uh, also, those with severe and persistent mental illness. The chronic mentally ill who are in psychiatric hospitals, some of them will do okay, but then some of them, if you, if you access marijuana to that group, the chronic schizophrenics, the chronic severe and persistent mentally ill, a lot of them will not be able to maintain a balance and take their medication and remain in the system. They'll end up homeless, the psychotic, and anything goes. So I think it's uh, I think it's very clear that we need to separate the issues of decriminalization of the possible medical uses of marijuana and this proposal to legalize and commercialize marijuana. Uh, we're really united here and, and as Sam New York to stop this. We are speaking to people on both sides of the aisle, many from the governor's party who agree with us uh, behind the scenes right now and kind of want to decide when to go public with that. Um, but we are getting, this is really a growing movement. It's uh, people who don't want to see their communities taken over by big marijuana, Philip Morris and Big Pharma, people that don't want to see their communities overrun with secondhand marijuana smoke, which is affecting new Borns and uh, pregnant women and 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 uh, uh, people in Colorado in huge numbers that that has increased in terms of THC with uh, babies born in Colorado. Uh, we're hearing from business people who do not want to see uh, their workplace, uh, the safety of their workplace go down with legal marijuana, the liability. This is really a trial lawyer's dream uh, in many ways because uh, the trial lawyers would probably like it because there's going to be a lot of lawsuits and uh, you can guarantee that uh, the issue of workplace safety is a huge one with respect to THC and marijuana. So we're saying slow down. We're saying listen to the science. We're saying listen to your fellow, not Republican governors, listen to your fellow Democrat governors who are saying to the, also to an effect slow down. By the way, Governor Hicken, Governors Hickenlooper and Brown were not in favor of legalization when it was being proposed in their states. There's no reason why uh, this governor, who is dedicated to science, should be uh, behind a massive industry that is Big Tobacco 2.0. So we urge him to change his mind and to listen to his better angels to do that. Thank you all for joining us today, and we're proud to be here. Uh, are there any questions from the press or anyone else? Otherwise, we can have one-on-one -on -one interviews afterwards and discussions. So maybe we'll do that. Thank you all.